Welcome home. I'm back home in the house of God. House of God. One day spent in your house. One day spent in your house. This beautiful place of worship. Be thousands. Be thousands spent on Greek island beaches. Let me tell you why you're here. Why you're here. You're here to be the salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. You're here to be light. You're here to be light. Be light. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret. Not a secret. God is not a secret to be cast. We are going public We're with going this. Public. We're, going public. We're going public with this. As public as a city on city a hill. On a hill. The mountain of the Lord's house will be the, will be the highest of all. The most important place on earth. The most important place on earth. Place on earth. Come on now. And I want you to pray. Pray the glory of God into that life right now. Pray that they would experience the goodness of God today. 
Come on now, pray with me. If you can't pray anything else, just said, fill it with your glory, Lord. Fill it with your power. Fill it with your freedom. Fill it with your joy. Fill it with your songs today, oh God. Father, you said that where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst, Lord. And more than anything, God, we need you in our midst today. We need you today. And I pray that you would fill every heart, fill every mind, fill every person today with your glory, Lord. With your manifest presence, Lord. Oh, Lord, let there be laughter, let there be song, let there be joy, let there be peace, God. God, most churches do this at the end of the service. But, God, you want this done in the beginning so we can be free to worship you, God. Father, I pray, God, that there would be no fear in this house right now. I pray that there would be no apprehension, Lord. I pray, God, that if there's anything that would block us or interfere, God, us uh, from connecting with you, God, on this morning, Father, break it off in the name of Jesus. Break it off in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, let this be a house of celebration to you because you've been good to us, God. You've done great things for us, God. And God, there's some things that are happening right now. Lord, we're open. I'm open today. If you're open to whatever it is God wants to say and do in your life, I want you to lift your hands with me. And just tell him, I'm open, Lord. We're open, Lord. Oh, we're open, God. Oh, now begin to thank him in advance for what he's going to do in your life. That's called faith praise. Oh, I'm grateful, Lord. Oh, Lord, 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 I love you, my Jesus. I praise you, my Lord. Receive our praise this morning, Lord. Receive our praise. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And if you agree with that prayer, let's give Lord a hand of praise and amen. Come on, give a shout unto the Lord and let's love him because he's worthy. Let's bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I'm going to say that I want you to envision that this front area here is like a river. And I want you to understand that Jesus Christ said that he has living water for you. And so whatever it is in your life that weighs you down, makes you feel anything short of joyful, loved, and merciful, this is where you come. And this is like your leap of faith, right? Whatever it is, it's just a symbol. There's actually not water here. But in your heart of hearts, in your mind of minds, you acknowledge that you want to step in to the living water. Elijah's going to lead us in this song. And I implore you to come alive this morning. Praise you, Jesus.
the captives free Spring up a well Spring up a well Spring up a well in me Nothing can stop this joy We're dancing in the streets Spring up a well never leave our side you're always there sometimes it's us that turns our eyes away but today God we want to acknowledge your presence in our lives there is nothing better than walking through this life with you in all of the struggle and the trials of life God they are so much easier when we spend that time with you so today, God, we acknowledge that you are good. We praise you for how you're so good. Thank you, Jesus, for defending, providing, and doing everything we need. You go before I know that you've even gone to in my war you come back with the head of my enemy you come back and you call it my victory yes mm -hmm. oh your victory is go before I know God you go before I know that you've even gone to win my war your love becomes my greatest defense it leads me from the dry did was praise you Jesus. and all I did was worship here's my life as it is and all I did was bow down to your will Lord. and all I did was stay better your way 
close your eyes and I want you to remember your BC days my niece calls that your before Christ days those days where you did not know that he was saving you in the midst of your trials and your heartache that he was there all along we remember those days because when we sing this part where it says when I thought that I lost myself you swooped in, Father. You picked up all my pieces. You knew exactly where each one of us was. You never took your heart or your eyes off of us. And if you haven't even met that moment yet, then use this moment to say, Father God, I give you my life and I ask you to find me here right now because it is so much better his way and when I thought I lost me you knew where I left me you reintroduced me to your love. You picked up all my pieces, put me back together. You are the defender of my heart. Let's sing that out. And when I thought I lost me, you knew. Oh 
sing it just say it it's so much better your way it's so much better your way I wouldn't have it any other way God it's so much better your way it's so much better Jesus God is saying that the pressure is off because all you have to do is praise him. All you have to do is lay down your life and worship him. You bow down to his will. You don't have to know all the answers. You don't have to be in control. The pressure is off and it is so much better his way.
morning at nine o'clock, there's a sister, a sister that said to me, Pastor, as I was praying, I can see as my eyes were shut that this bright light, this bright light came over us. And she looked at me and I said, because that bright light overtakes the darkness. And the darkness cannot contain it. And the Lord showed me that there's a darkness, if you don't know, taking place in that youth room right now. So I want you to extend your hand to that youth room right now. Because there's been a darkness that is being overtaken by the light of Jesus. There is someone in that room that came with a darkness. And the servants of God, Pastor Rudy and Gloria, God is using them and he's using us. And that light that that sister saw is that light that the scripture says it overtakes any darkness. It's so bright that the darkness has to go. It has to leave. It doesn't belong. Jesus, you know what's taking place. Jesus, you know what's taking place. Holy Spirit, your power is being manifested through your servants. Any darkness that, are, that, that your children are carrying, The light of Jesus covers that darkness. And darkness has to flee. Darkness has to flee. Darkness has to flee. Darkness has to flee. Has to flee. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You have no authority in the name of Jesus. No authority. No authority. You are to leave in the name of Jesus. 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 I found 
prayer job. We need something more. There's always more, 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 more. But that's not true. 
We just need you, Jesus. We just need you. We need more, more, more of you. You, God. today. Be vulnerable today. Need him today. We need you, God. Jesus. I need your love like I need water. I need your love like I need breath inside of my lungs. Burn in my heart just like a fire. Come and take me over, Jesus, draw me closer to your heart. I need your love like I need water. Who is 
like you No one that I know of I could search all the earth and find not one There's no shadow that you won't be found in Your face illuminates the deep in me
could search all of heaven above and never find another like you, another like you. I could search all the earth below and never find another like you, another like you. There's no other more beautiful. I'll never find another like you, another like you. There's no other more wonderful. I'll never find. Let him know that he's worthy this morning in the house. Come on. Yeah. We serve a miracle-working God. A life-changing God. The light of the world. Every knee will bow before him someday. With the accountability of what you have done throughout your life. Is it good or is it bad? Only God knows your record besides you. This morning, as we partake communion, before you come and get the elements, I want you to, I want you to, to prepare your heart. This is not anything we take lightly. This is a life-changing emblem right here. 
Yeah, it's just a little thing of grape, grape juice and a little cracker. But it represents what Jesus did on the cross. He shed his blood for you and for me. And for that, I will ever be grateful. His body was broken for your sins and my sins. And my sins might outnumber your sins, but nevertheless, he paid the price so I didn't have to. That I could have eternal life with him. Amen. I know I'm in a Pentecostal church. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Oh, it's time to raise the roof. The doors are open. Let the noise flow out into the street. That God did something great for you this morning. He did something. He paid the price. You know, there's a TV show I love to watch. It's called uh, High Speed Chases. And when the enemy, when, the, when, the, when the, the pursuee is caught, and they start going through his car or her car, oh, that's not my stuff. Oh, that's not my stuff. That's not mine. I, I just borrowed the, that car belongs to somebody else. So many times we as Christians come before the Lord like that. Amen? Lord, I didn't do that. Lord, I didn't say that. That wasn't me, Lord. That was somebody else. That was my brother. He's my twin. You know, even though we're twins, identical twins, God knows the difference between each one of you, each one of us. Our heart needs to be pure this morning. So take a moment right where you're at. Make sure your heart is pure before the Lord before we come and get the emblems. Lord, we just ask that you search us right now. Lord, we just sang that there's no one like you. And Lord, if there's nobody else like you on the face of the earth, we want to be just like you. We want to be set apart. Called by your name, covered by your blood. Free because of the brokenness of your body. Lord, help us to repent immediately when we sin. And not carry it month to month just before and right before we partake of the emblems then we we have all this stuff that we have to confess but Lord we come before you daily and we confess our faults we're human we err and God you make a way of protection Holy Spirit touch our hearts this morning but forgiving one another. And if we have aught with our brothers or our sisters, we ask that you would forgive us and that we would be humble enough to forgive them and to forgive ourselves in that fault. Father, you say to participate in this until you come again because you volunteered yourself to come for us, to bring us back to your heart, Lord and into your heavens if you are our personal savior if you want to all come and um, get a cup
to partake, we're going to read 1 Corinthians 11. The important thing about taking communion is it is in remembrance of what the Lord did for us. But it applies to today. It's Amen. just as powerful today as when it happened. It says, the same night in which he was handed over, he took bread and gave thanks. Then he distributed it to the disciples and said, take it and eat your fill. It is my body which is given for you. And remember, he did this willingly. Amen. Do this to remember me. So, Lord, we dedicate this act of faith to you that by yes. your stripes, mm. we are healed. Amen. did the same with a cup of wine after supper and said, this cup seals the new covenant with my blood. What he shed on the cross. It seals the new covenant with my blood. Drink it. And whenever you drink this, do it and remember me. bread and drink this cup, you are retelling the story, proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. Amen? Amen. of God Worthy is your who takes name. away the sins of the world. Worthy is your name. He's worthy, worthy, Jesus. worthy. Worthy, worthy, you worthy. The Come on, let's lift up our hands to the Lord. Worthy. Worthy is your name. Hallelujah. Jesus. Santa Yes, hallelujah. There's no one like you, Jesus. No one has done for us what you've done. Worthy, 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 worthy. You deserve the praise. No one like you, Lord. Worthy. Come on, one more time, church. Worthy. Worthy is your name. Hallelujah. Deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Just the voices. Worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Now quietly and reverently. Worthy is your name. Deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Come on, let's close your eyes, hands lifted up. Worthy is your name. That's what we're going to be saying around the throne of God in heaven. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. You deserve the praise. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. I say we put an amen on that. Amen. Come on and applause 
al Señor. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. He is worthy, 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 worthy. Oh, my goodness. I must say, church, you look a whole lot better now than when you first came in this morning. It's like the touch of God and the touch of the Spirit is on you right now. Come on, turn to two or three people sitting around. Let them, you look a whole lot better now than when you first came in this morning. Worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy. You may be seated, right? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy. Thank you, Melissa. And he, thank you, Elijah, sitting in on the keyboards and leading us this morning. I love God's presence. I love God's presence. And when I say you look a whole lot better now, I mean that. See, the touch of God, the presence of God is refreshing. The presence of God, the Bible says that in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. You know, I got to turn off the mic sometimes because I, I do it when I get happy, I get loud. And, uh, you know, somebody once told me, they say, hey, Pastor, they said, man, Henry, man, why you got to be so loud when you're talking to God? Hey, God's not deaf. I say, that's right, and he doesn't suffer from a nervous condition either. He ain't scared. But whether you're quiet or whether you're loud, whether you, that's what's the beauty of the body of Christ. We're all so different. Amen. And we embrace that difference. I don't have to be like you, and you don't have to be like me, but we have to be like him. We have to be like him, right? We have to be like him. And I see we uh, have some uh, visitors here. Welcome to Life Church, whether you're watching us online. Come on, let's give our guests, our guests a welcome. And, uh, you know, in a little bit when the uh, ushers come and we take up... Uh, God's tithe in our offerings. Please fill out a, a visitor's card. We got a gift in the back uh, for you. We got uh, uh, Daniel and Brenda back there, right? Hey, they got a gift for you, a nice bag. There's some cool stuff in there. All you got to do is put that card in the offering basket, all right? When the offering basket comes by, and we would really, really appreciate Hey, if you brought a guest, help them to fill that card out. All right, because they're a little timid. They get a little nervous. If we haven't seen you in a while, you got a new address, new number, fill that out too. That's how Pastor and I can connect with you. So please do that. Brother Moises is going to come uh, as we prepare to receive God's tithe and our offerings this morning. We get to give. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Morning, church. Um, Facebook, hello. Um, uh, just a just a uh, friendly reminder. There's uh, envelopes and those greeting cards on your chairs. If you don't have them, just raise your hand up, and one of the ushers will come and get, get it for you. Um, uh, well, praise God. So um, I'm just gonna read. Okay. So first, I'm going through, I'm, I'm going to do a quick little devotion. I'm, I don't have much to say, but I think um, I needed to hear it, so I wanted to share it. Uh, first, th uh, It's in First Thess Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, 16 through 24. So it rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will. For you in Christ Jesus, do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with, with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through all through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. <coughs> so, uh, for me, um, dude, I have a hard time staying rejoicing all the time and being happy all the time, but I got to consistently remind myself that in the end, <laughs> we win, right? <laughs> we win. So, it doesn't matter what we're going through on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just a, a, a consistent reminder that this is just a temporary, yeah. right? This is just temporary. Then we, uh, we, we're, we're going to get tested. But we got to stay faithful, right? We got to stay faithful to our brothers, to our community, and to our God. And um, I'll leave it with that. Let's just come up. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord Father God. Thank you for bringing us together to just celebrate another day, Lord God. As the people give, bless them, Lord Father, the gift and the giver. And um, Lord Father God, <laughs> multiply it a hundredfold, and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, uh, uh, that, that scripture that Moises read, it says, are you going to repeat it with me? Say, Faithful is he, Faithful is he. Who, will who will do it. Say it again. One more time. Any of y'all like me struggle with stuff? <laughs> Come on, tell the truth and shame El Diablo. If you can't raise your hand, hey, you struggle with lying. So we all struggle with stuff, right? But the scripture says, faithful is he who will do it. Do what? It's to sanctify you through and through, to help you with that thing that you, that's bigger than you, that you can't seem uh, to get through. He is faithful to sanctify you through and through. In other words, the thing that he has started inside of you, the Bible says, <laughs> he's going to, he's going to, he's going to, what he started, he's going to finish in you. He's a great finisher. Come on now. He's a great finisher. And he ain't done yet. You need to know this this morning. Come on, come on, Pastor. As far as your where you stand before God, if you have invited Jesus Christ into your heart, if you've turned away from your former way of thinking, which was a thinking that was not aligned with God, all right? What it means to repent is change the way you think about God. That's what repentance means. You know how we were before God. We did what we wanted whenever we wanted to do it. Our thinking was, yeah, okay, I, God's all right, but I, I got some things I need to, I need to do. And, and really, I, I, I'm going to do what I want to do. See, but when you align yourself with God and you get right and say, Lord, come into my life. Make me a new person. I turn away from my sin. That moment that you do that, you are right with God no matter what. Say no matter what. No matter what. You are saved. He fills you with the Holy Ghost. He writes your name in the Lamb's book of life and you are ready to see him. Not when you were baptized, not when you become a goody goody, but the moment you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart to change your life, you are right with God. The Bible says you become the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. And he begins to work. Right? That thing that happens, that's called sanctification. Say sanctification. sanctification. All right? Hey, in recovery, we call that recovery. All right? 
That's what we call it. It's the same. People are scared of that, that word. And they, oh, recovery just means getting back to the place where God wants you to be, what he made you to be. It, Jesus Christ is the only one that can do that for you. We're reminded of that this morning. That's what this is about. Remember what I did for you. And Jesus meant that when he said that. Why? Because we forget. I statement, I forget. So he commits himself, and he showed you how great his commitment is to you, to your family, to your life, to your relationship with him by dying on the cross. And we remember that in communion. So positionally, we're sanctified the moment we ask Jesus Christ to come into our hearts. We're, we're right with God. You can't be any writer with God. You can't do that on your own. He does the work. But experientially, the way that we live now, day to day, it's a process. Let me hear you say, it's a process. That's what we call progressive sanctification. I don't mean to try to impress you with theological, but I want to encourage you. You're right with God. But progressive means day by day. We say uh, one day at a time. And God is committed to that process. Bible says being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you, Ralph, and in me too, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Come on, that's good, right? That's why the Bible says... That he is the author and the finisher, say finisher, finisher. of our faith. Come on. See, that's why it's important, church, that we know the word of God. Amen. That's it, you know, that you know. I like, you triggered me, Moises. You triggered me. You know, when you said, no, man, hey, we win. That's what triggered all this. Because sometimes it looks like we are losing the battle here on earth. But the victory has already been won in heaven. In heaven. In heaven. And you say, well, Pastor Henry, why do you know that? Because I know what the word says. Word says I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. The word says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We're saved. Shata la la wakanda. Forgive me for getting a little excited about that, but I know I was on my way to hell. I know where I was at before, but not today. No, today, 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 I got the Spirit of God living inside of me. I got a new mind, a new heart, a new spirit, a new purpose to know Him and enjoy Him forever. Be encouraged. Be encouraged today. There's a lot of discouragement out there. Some of that discouragement is sitting right next to you today. Don't look that way. <laughs> I shared this the other day with the men in our men's Bible study. I said, we're sharing with somebody. I need a pen real quick. I'll give, I'll give it right back. Give me a piece of paper, Mom. Give me. Oh, look how shiny that is. You know the Bible says, I'm going to touch on that in a second, that we could, he, we're going to have a glorified body in heaven. Yes. All right, and what glorified means is shiny. Say shiny. shiny. I don't know. Somebody asked me, you know, are we going to be Puerto Rican? Are we going to be black? Are we going to be? I, I said, I don't know. But the Bible says we're going to be shiny. We're going to be shiny in heaven. We're going to be shiny, Tommy. So, Tommy, this is you. I'm going to put Tommy right here. That's Tommy right there. Say hello to Tommy. All right. All right. Tommy, who's that sitting next to you? Melissa. Say hello to Melissa. All right. So, look. 
This is Tommy. Once you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, Tommy, like I know you have, the Bible says, Paul says, we are in Christ Jesus. Say, in Christ Jesus. Jesus. We're in Christ Jesus. Now, the Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word with God, and the Word was God. All right? So, this is Jesus. He's the Word. From the very beginning, all right? So this is Tommy, all right? Tommy, when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, you get in Christ Jesus. Tommy is in Christ Jesus. Now, Tommy, I ain't writing any of your sins and stuff that's going on, but let's say there were two or three. You know, you're working on things. We're all working on things, right? We're in process. Right? And so when we become in Christ Jesus, guess what? God sees when he's looking for Tommy. He sees Jesus. He sees Jesus. He don't see you. He don't see your sin. He sees the blood of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that was made for you. Why? Because you were in Christ Jesus. Let me hear you say, I'm in Christ Jesus. Now, for those of you who are not in Christ Jesus, you want to get in Christ Jesus before the day is over. All right? Because if you're not in Christ Jesus, guess what? You're going to be judged for all of that stuff. All right? And you don't win. You lose. We talk about in the men's Bible study, we got reservations. Either you're going to be in the smoking or the non-smoking section. No, but that choice is up to you. But I want you to encourage you even further than that. Not only are you in Christ Jesus, but Christ Jesus is inside of you. Come on, give him praise. That's right. Isn't that what you said? We said, Jesus come into my heart, right? Isn't that what you said? He says he's put the Spirit of God inside of you as a deposit. He's inside of you. The Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of you. The other day I was thinking about that, man, that blew me away. Do you know how many people in in the years past moved out of my life? But not Jesus. <laughs> when everybody else is running out, man, he's on a mission to come all the way in. Come on, give him praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, Pastor Rudy said, true story. True story. Be encouraged in the Lord. I thank God that he's given us this safe space when we can be built up by him, when we can be loved on by him, when we can be accepted, forgiven. You could do that at home, and you could, but something happens when the people of God come together. That's why the Bible says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren and sisters, the brothers and sisters, to dwell together. I love you, church. I love you. Let me tell you, man. This, let me tell you, you look a whole lot better now than when you first came in. Something about the Spirit of God, man. That's right. Hey, what they say? Love is blind? No, no, just kidding. <laughs> I do love you today. I love God's presence. It's good to worship. Hey, Hello, those of y'all watching us online, and hey, don't, 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 be, don't get scared. You know, when you come in here, it, styles are different. Don't let style keep you away from God. You know, I, uh, and I always say in the church, hey, listen, ain't nothing going to jump on you here. Someone will come inside of you and invite him. It's Jesus Christ. But he only comes by invitation, you know. If you don't invite him, you know, that's, that's up to you. Man, but I'm going to tell you, Jesus Christ has changed my life. I was telling, I met a, I met a, I met a, a young lady who was sitting in the back. Her name was Esperanza. 
She's back there, and her, that means hope. What a be- I told her, what a beautiful name is to be, have a name, Hope. I said, so, I said, Esperanza, you know what I tell, I worked, I worked in the prison, state prison for about five years, and I would tell the guys, I'd say, listen, guys, I used to be a hopeless dope fiend, but today, I'm a dopeless hope fiend. Shata la Whoa, thank you, Jesus, woo, oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Life Church. We're in Luke chapter 11. And uh, if those of you don't have your word, we I always put them up here for you. You can read along with me. But I just want to remind you, we've been walking through verse by verse. I think we started this journey following Jesus through the book of Luke. I think we started it in December of last year. So, uh, whoa, we're almost a year in, and I'm not, e- I'm not even halfway through the book, so I'm praying for direction right now. Uh, m- are you enjoying uh, following Jesus through oh, the book yeah. of Luke, right? Yeah. Right? I mean, I told you, last year I introduced you to the Holy Spirit through the book of Acts. Some of y'all known him, but how he works and how he moves, and he gave us a blueprint, say blueprint, Right. For the structure of the church, how the church was born, how to grow a church, how to send a church all right, and the purpose of it through the book of Acts by the Holy Spirit. All right. It's the acts of the Holy Spirit. And this year we move towards introducing or reintroducing you to Jesus. Not the Jesus everybody might tell you about, but the Jesus the Bible says about. Who Jesus is. So we've been, walk- man, we've been walking with Jesus. And I, what I want to share with you before we look at Luke chapter 11 is that Jesus is about one year, say one year, okay. from the cross. Okay. Okay. That's where we're at right now in the book of Luke. Year to 18 months, historically, he's on marching towards the cross. And why is he marching towards the cross? For you. For me. I want to remind you that the cross was not a surprise to Jesus. That's what he came to do. Jesus came to die. You know, he came to die for you. He came to do for you what you couldn't do for yourself. And God is a just God. And see, the the, the, the sin came into the world through one man. What was his name? Adam, all right, they came into the world through one man, one sinful man. So here's the, how God balances the scale. Okay, it came in through one man, then it's got to leave through one man. But he can't be sinful. He's got to be sinless. There's no sinless man, no sinless woman. And Jesus said, I'll go. That's basically the story. Through his life, through his, now the words in the Bible doesn't say I'll go, but through his life, through his experience, through what we saw, that was his message. And that's good that, I, that we saw it, because a lot of people say I'll go and then don't go. But in Jesus Christ, he always does what he says he's going to do. So he's on his way to the cross, all right? He's on his way, and so he's got to tie some things up. We, I shared with you, he was just one person, could only be at one place at one time. A little later on, we're going to read about Holy Spirit, how he sent him, and, and how Jesus said to the disciples, no, y'all are going to do greater things than what I did. So uh, I think the last couple of weeks, the week before last, we talked about how he first he sent out the 12, then he sent out the 70, because, man, we got to get the word out. What's the word? Jesus is alive. Jesus is in the miracle working business, and Jesus loves you today. That's the good news. That's the gospel. That's what we've been called to preach, okay? That, you're going to get a good dose of that here in this church. Bad news, we'll leave that for somebody else. Good news, you're going to get it here. How many of y'all need some good news? 
All right, then I'm in the right house. I'm in the right house uh, because I believe the Spirit of God is going to teach us some things today. So we're going to pray. Father, I sense your presence and your power and your love here today. There's already been miracles happening. People being set free. I saw people clapping God who probably ain't been clapping for a long time. I heard laughter, God, coming out of someone who's probably super depressed and lonely. I see hope in the eyes of people, God, who maybe have experienced hopelessness. And Father, I, I sense your life in this building. And Lord, I thank you for your word because, man, your word gives us life. The psalmist said you sent your word and it healed them. Lord, bring your word. Send your word into this house, into our hearts, and into our minds to bring healing. I, 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 they don't need to hear from me. I heard enough from me, Lord, today. But it's your word that has impact and power. It's your word that sets the captives free. Don't fill my mouth, Lord, with your words today. Lord, I know it's your heart and it's my heart, God, that everybody leave here with you inside. That everyone leave here in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus in them. You know, that's my heart, God. I ain't trying to hide that. That's what you call me to do is to preach the good news. But today you want to give us some instruction on how do we do this. How do we live this life? So God, I pray that you would speak your wisdom and your truth that we might leave this place a whole lot better than what we came in, God, for having been with you and worshipped you and studied your word together. Holy Spirit, speak through me today. And I'll be sure to love you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Ooh, oh, yeah. Whoa, we get to study the Bible together today. Oh, yeah. I love worship. Anyone knows me, man? I get a little crazy. I love it. When you were depressed as long as I was, man, it's good, man, to whoop, whoop, and be a little happy. I love it. I love coming together with y'all. I love all the, But, man, I'm going to tell you, what's changed my life is the word of God. Bible says, man, it's more powerful than a two-edged sword. It's able to cut through. Yeah. It will change you. If you let it, man, and align yourself with what God says. Jesus said you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Oh, yes, it has, so I'm in Luke chapter 11. The Bible says in verse number 1, of chapter 11, it says, Now it came to pass. Say, now it came to pass. Yeah. All right. As he was praying in a certain place, when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Now, the Bible doesn't say where this place was. It just says what? In a certain place. Say a certain place. All right, it doesn't give a specific place where his disciples saw him praying, but they saw him praying somewhere. In my imagination, I picture Jesus uh, praying in the morning. I love to pray in the morning. And y'all know me, I'm, I, I love to pray in the morning. And I, I, I mean, I picture, man, it's maybe breakfast time and the, the apostles are, where's Jesus? And where, where's Jesus? And, and they can't see him and they go and they say, oh, uh, 
This is my version of my narrative. The Bible doesn't say, but this is through my man, how I see it. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? And then, hey, it's, it's quiet. And there he is praying again. Yeah. <laughs> and they go see him. How many of y'all like to see Jesus? Yeah. They go see. Oh, my goodness, what did Jesus' prayer sound like? Where has it been? His tone, his crying. And he says that they saw Jesus. It says right here, look. He was praying in a certain place. And then he says, when he ceased. All right. They waited for him to finish. All right. I thought, man, I'll be caught up. I don't know if you ever hear one of these man, real praying people, man. They are praying. And, man, you just get captivated by it. You know, some things are better caught than taught. You know what I'm saying? They're caught. You, some things you just got to get around somebody that's praying. I told you how I learned how to pray. I just used to know the mass in Latin when I went through the program. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison. I, I knew it. And so I was in a position praying. This one staff member said, hey, hey, what are you doing? I said, I'm praying. They said, oh, man, they called me into the office. Hey, that's good. You're trying to, but, you know, you got the spirit of God inside of you. You you can talk to God directly. You don't got to talk to him in Latin, and you don't have to be repeating that over and over again. They said, what I want you to do, man, you see that? It brought me back in the chapel. That brother up there, that's Brother Antoine. I was pretty new in the program. She said, I want you to get next to Brother Antoine because Brother Antoine could pray. I mean, that guy was in the ghost. That guy was in the ghost, man. That fire was all over him. He was in the Holy Ghost. So I went over. He said, go kneel by Brother Antoine. And man, whatever Brother Antoine pray, you just sit next, stand next to him and say, amen. So Brother Antoine be praying, Brother Rock would be, amen, 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 amen. And man, he had the fire or he was dripping in the glory. And man, you know, sooner or later, after saying amen, that boy, that spirit of prayer just jumped on me and listening to him and being in with that. Next thing you know, I had somebody kneeling next to me saying, amen, amen, amen. Because some things are better caught than taught. Be caught and taught. But in this instance where we're at, the disciples must have seen something about Jesus' prayer life that was different than maybe their own. All right? Maybe their own. Maybe their Why do I say that? Because he said, the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. So they must have recognized there's something lacking in my prayer life. I don't pray like that. Maybe it man, the, the, the action that followed, the love that flowed, the miracles that happened, the demons that got cast out, the blind eyes that were opened, the leper being cleansed, the paralytic walking, something. You know say? I don't know. I can imagine. But they said, teach us to pray. Now I want to share something with you. We got a lot of preachers in our church. A lot of them. We got some young, some, we do. We got a lot of preachers. That's been the story of my life. Churches that pastor, they preachers that come in and get raised up. And uh, other ones where there's been seasoned, come and help. And they want to be a part of the movement of God. But what I want you preachers to hear right here is that the disciples, the, they did not say, teach us how to preach. They didn't say, Teach us how to teach. They didn't say, teach us how to raise the dead. Teach us how to open blind eyes. Teach us how to do miracles. Teach us how to prophesy. No. They said, teach us to pray. Pray to who? Pray to the Father. So listen, preachers, and y'all know I love you. Man, that can be very humbling because I can think, man, my words are powerful. The words that I say to you are powerful. But I want you to know today that the words that you say to God are more powerful than the words that you share with people. Whoa. True story, Pastor. That's humbling. (laughs) That's humbling. 
teach us to pray. I guess John the Baptist also taught his disciples. And Jesus said, when you pray, say. How many of y'all want to, be, to say, man, my prayer life can be improved, right? All right. So now listen, this is, they didn't say teach us how to pray. All right. You need to understand that. They weren't asking for a technique. You know, you can go to a prayer conference and they give you the magic formula. If you pray like this, like this, like this, if you say this word, this is going to happen. No. They weren't asking for a formula. They weren't asking for a technique. They saw that, man, Jesus had a habit of prayer. They saw that when Jesus had to make major decisions in his life, he got away and prayed. They saw, man, that maybe there's a man, teach us to pray more. Teach us to pray like you. Uh, not necessarily a technique, but a model. They knew in listening to him pray and seeing the results of his prayer life that their prayer life could use some help. Am I talking to the right church today? Come on now. Right? I, there's something. I, 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 I want that. <laughs> Man, I want to be able to communicate with God like that. So, okay, so Jesus breaks it down. Remember, he's on the way to the cross. He's got to give his disciples the right teaching so that they could impact the world. They were, you know, they were fishermen, most of them. They were common people. I mean, they didn't have the most eloquent prayer language. But they saw what Jesus had. And church, we should always want what Jesus has. Right? We should always want that. So here, listen what Jesus says. Jesus says right here in verse number two, our Father. Say our Father. our Father. Now one thing I want you to notice there, when Jesus is laying it out, he doesn't say my Father. What does he say? Our Father. You know what that makes us? Brothers and sisters. He's all, we have the same Father that makes us what? And that's when you call, uh, well, see, pastor now, but, you know, uh, my sister here, that's where it comes from. We have the same father, all right? He's our father. Yeah, he's my father, but Jesus is, t is teaching a prayer in community, and we are part of a community that's bigger than us. We are part of the body of Christ. We all have the same daddy, you know, so our what? Our Father. Now, you need to know that uh, in this culture, in this religious culture, uh, the literature of that time, and I'm doing some reading around there, that, that at that time, no one really came to God in a regular place and addressed him as Father. That was like to another level of intimacy. That was to another level of relationship. Jesus, he said, man, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But Jesus and the Father were tight. You know, you hear them say, Abba, right? Abba. No, I stood on this for a little bit, Pastor Darla. And I was thinking about my dad. And I didn't call my dad Abba. In my house, they referred to uh, God as Papa Dios, which is like Father God. There you go. You know what I refer to my, my, my dad, what I call my dad? Papi. Say Papi. 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 Boy, that just moved me when I was reading and studying because I had, like, my dad was kind of had two different personalities. He was bipolar. But the good daddy was poppy. He was so loving and kind and generous. I had, such, I had a good relationship with him. And so Jesus, when he addresses his father in heaven, Abba, what the scripture is saying, no, listen. You come to God as your daddy, whatever it was. You come to, with that kind of relationship. You don't have to come, listen, with religious talk. You don't have to come with, you know, with, with all kind of... No, you know what's... A, this, this, this prayer, if I read the whole thing, it's, it's not even 30 seconds long. 
You don't have to be long-winded, you know, when you come and talk to God. You don't have to have flowery words. You just got to come with the right heart. You know, you don't come and you don't address those of you who had a daddy. You come in respect and you come in. But no, remember when you were little, man, if y'all had a dad that you could come to, man. I'd be jumping on my dad. I'd be messing with his hair. I'd be, man, my daddy, he'd be tickling me. I mean, I had a great time when I'd come to God, to my, to my dad most time. The same thing with God. When you come to God in prayer, I don't mean being irreverent. But you come to him as the father. Now, some of y'all, well, you didn't have a good relationship with your father. I mean, straight up, some people have. And I had, my dad had two different personalities. He was man, one was loving and kind, and the other one was, he was a drunk. And he could be mean, not to me, but to people. But God is always good, God the father. And you could come to him like that. Say, Abba. You know, in the Middle East, that's what they refer to their dads. It's not a, oh, it just means daddy. It means papa. It says you can come to him that way. You don't need to be long, you know. Uh, they say, man, they, I, don't, I went to a men's meeting uh, at another place in another planet at another where uh, the pastor, they were just using his church. Uh, and so the, the men were there. They had speaker. They had music. They had everything was set. But I think that pastor had never seen a crowd so big. So, man, they called him up to pray. And he just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. You know what they say? Hey, the first three minutes you pray, I pray with you. The second three minutes you pray, I pray for you. (laughs) The last three minutes you pray, I pray against you. (laughs) And I would say that, kidding, but you know what? It don't have, a prayer doesn't need to be everlasting to be eternal, all right? And Jesus models that here. Now, we call that the Lord's Prayer, but this is the disciples' prayer. The read the Lord's Prayer is in John chapter 17 when it's him and his daddy talking, all right? You can go in there and look for yourself. So he says, our Father. Where is our Father? In heaven. Where is he? In heaven. Now, baby, I don't know if you remember first time you went to the Empire State Building with me in New York City. All right, so we went up, and it's cool, man. We've been up to the Freedom Tower, too, but we went up at night, all right? And we went up, up, up to the top. We took the elevator. We did all that. It was so windy at the top. And, man, when we looked over the edge, the city was lit up. And Pastor Eva said to me, Henry, we can see everything from up here. It was way up above. And when you say our Father in heaven, what you're saying and reminding yourself of is that God sees everything. God's vantage point is not your vantage point. God sees the beginning and God sees the end. God sees the right now and God sees the yesterday. He, I mean, he's higher than the Empire State Building. He's higher than that. And in that culture, when they said our Father in heaven, they were saying all-powerful. God is amazing. God is higher, not just in altitude, but in character, in power, in might, in strength, in love, in intellect. God in heaven. Remind yourself who you're praying to. He's daddy, he's poppy, he's Abba, but he is where? In heaven. He's in heaven. He's a different kind of a papi. He's a different kind of an Abba. He's a different kind of a father. No, man. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. He's in heaven. In the sky. High, expansive. There's no one like your God. You're his child. And you have access to all that he is. Because all that he is is not only in heaven, but for those of you who have been born again of the Spirit, everything that's in heaven is in you. Ooh, come on, let that sink in. 
Let, not because Pastor Henry said it, but man, no, that the Bible said. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than the problem you may be having. Whether it's a financial problem, whether it's a soul problem, whether it's a relationship problem, whether it's an addiction problem, whether it's a mental health problem. Greater! Shout out on Makanda. Because that's not an earthly father. It's a heavenly father. Where is God? In heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Whoa, what he's saying here, hollow, holy, separate is God's name than any name that you know down here. There is nobody like our God. Say, there's nobody like our God. You see, in that culture, your name embodied who you were. Your character. When he says, hallowed be thy name, he's saying your name is above every other name. There is no other name, no other person, no other power that has the distinctions, the, 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 the separation from who we are. There is nobody like our God. And so that's where you get God got all these names. What? Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Shalom, my peace. Hear what I'm saying? He's got so many names. I, go, I, I came up with like 72. I'm not going to read them all for you right now. <laughs> it would take all morning. I, you know, I, I, I can't do that right now. But man, there is no other name. I used to sing a song. There is no other name given to man. That he might be saved. There's no other name, no other name, no other name. Hallowed be thy name. Goes on to say, your kingdom come. Your purpose, your priority, your dominion, your plan. All that you are and all that you want. Bring it on, God. All oh, your kingdom, your purpose, your dominion, your plan, everything that is you bring to me right now. Oh, but some people in the church across the street, there's nobody like that here, I'm sure. It's, it ain't about God's kingdom. It's about my kingdom. What I want. When I want it. How I want it. No. There's one king. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Come, your kingdom, come. Your plan, your purpose, your power, your desire. Bring it here. On earth. Bring your kingdom. Lord, come. Your will be done. Your will. You know, hey, Frank Sinatra, <laughs> what was his theme song? I did it what? My way. I call that Hell's Anthem. <laughs> That's Hell's theme song. And they'll say, sing it again. I did it my way. In the smoking section. The non-smoking section is going to be, I did it thy way. Come, thy kingdom, come. Thy will be done. He asks them how to pray. He's teaching them. Come, thy kingdom. Then he says, on earth, as it is in heaven. What does that mean? It means this. In heaven, you don't need, there are going to be people praying, uh, your will be done. No, because in heaven, everybody that's up there in heaven or in that place, no, man, you don't have to pray that. You know why? Because you weren't done with God's will. You're living in God's will. You're worshiping God. You're serving God. You don't have that, that battle between the flesh 
and the spirit anymore. You don't have flesh like this. You have a glorified body. It's a body that was created to worship God, to know him, to encapsulate the spirit of God. All right? So you ain't going to have to pray that in heaven. You're going to live that. It's going to ooze out of you. You're going to be saying, worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Holy is the lamb. Holy is the lamb. You're not going to have to pray that. What is Jesus saying right here? The way it is in heaven where they serve God, worship God, know God, love God. Bring that kind of life down here and bring it in me. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. In earth as is already in heaven. Verse 3. Give us this day our daily bread. All right. Now, some people try to spiritualize this. They got our man. And you break out your commentaries. Everybody, well, it means this. And it's a, a metaphor for this or allegorically saying that. And everybody's got a different philosophy. You know what I think my interpretation is of this when he says, give us this day our daily bread. You know what I think this, the bread symbolizes? Bread. <laughs> That's it. You know, you can say it means this, you can see it means that. No, it means bread. And that culture, man, people, people did not have a lot of food. People that you would be like considered, even the poorest person in this room would be considered a person of means in that culture. And that culture, man, the regular folk, man, they just made it day to day. They just lived one day at a time. They needed manna from heaven. They needed God to meet their provision, their needs. And I want you to know that God cares about those things. He cares about what you eat. He cares that you eat. He cares that you have a place to live. He cares. He cares about meeting your needs. God in heaven. Papa Dios. Papi Dios. He wants to be involved in those decisions. He he wants to feed you. He wants to take care of you. Why? Because he's your daddy. Right? Right? Look, look what he said. I'm just, I'm just reading what the Bible says. Give us this day our daily bread. In other words, meet our needs, Lord. Has God met your needs? He meets mine. I'll tell you, he meets my needs, but not necessarily my greeds. Got quiet quick. What happened? All the amen and shouting. I love Pastor Eva says, no, God meets all of my needs and sometimes some of my wants. He's a good, good father. Right? He's a good, good father. And then he says, verse 4, and forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins. I want to share something with you. Forgiveness is for the soul what bread is for the, fo- uh, is for the body. Let me say it again. That's why they're linked. It said, give us this day our daily bread and what? Forgive us our trespasses. Your soul cannot be healthy without forgiveness. You can't truly feed from God if your soul has unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment in your heart. That's why he says, no, man, if you come to worship God and you know you got something in here against your brother, you go, you leave your gift at the altar and you go and you make things right. Then come back because people matter to God. Your heart matters to God. Your soul matters to God. And any place that's in your a heart that's occupied by unforgiveness, it's a space that God can't occupy. That's what he's saying. That's why they're linked. Forgive us our trespasses and trespass a debt as we forgive our debtors. See, God, Jesus sees sin as a debt that only he can pay. We used to sing that song. He paid a debt. He did not owe. I owed a debt. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing. 
A brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Boom, boom. That's the gospel. Woo! And you say, as he said, they want to know how to all right, get it right, he's telling them. Get it right first with him, of course, but get it right with each other. You want your soul. You want to be able to sing. I love it when Melissa sings that song to open. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well. Boy, I, I, got, a sing, I got a singing preacher spirit jumped on me today. I'm rejoicing in the Lord because I know God's word is being preached and we're teaching you some things that are going to help you to learn and grow and be a blessing. Why? Because God wants to bless through you. See, but how can we bring people at peace outside when we're fighting them against one another? Huh. No, it's not going to happen like that. We got to be right with each other. Man, so that love flows out of a pure heart. My heart's not per- perfect, but it is forgiven. You know what I'm saying? So he's still, the teaching continues. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Then he says, and lead us, uh, uh, lead us, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. He's saying, listen, don't let me to be tested beyond what I'm able, man. I, I don't, you know, pray that God, and God does test you, but God doesn't tempt anyone. You need to know that today. One of the first verses I learned in Memorizing Teen Challenge was uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and this is what it says. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful. Say God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you were able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape. Somebody say hallelujah. That you also may be able to bear. Don't always, well, when man, a test comes, a temptation comes. God always uh, 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 prepares an escape hatch. He always, say always. always. He always provides a way out. Always. Now, I don't always take it. I'm going to tell the truth. You know, all the lights are blinking. Danger. Like the old Lost in Space and the robot. You Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, Henry. Danger, danger. And I'm like, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. You're going to find, man, you like me and I'm like you. And we both like Jesus if we have him in our hearts. So, <clears throat> lead us, and lead us not into temptation, he said, uh, but deliver us from evil. Then he tells this story. Verse 5. It says, verse 5, it says, And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? Have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. Verse 7. And will he not answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is not now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. Now he's talking, he's going to teach you about whatever. You keep coming. Say keep coming. When CR, we say keep coming back. All right? That's what we say. Jesus is teaching them about prayer. And he tells them a story. Somebody needs some food because he's having a friend over. And in that culture, if you didn't have something to give them, something, a friend that was visiting, it was considered a shame on you. It was considered disgraceful. So he goes to his neighbor's house and says, come on, man. Ba, 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 ba. Hey, hey uh, help me out. I got somebody coming over, man. I need some bread. Well, the neighbor says, hey, man, I, 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 I can't do it right now. I'm sleeping. I'm with my family. I ain't getting up. I can't do it. He didn't say he didn't have the bread. He just said he couldn't do it. 
Now, in order to understand this story, you got to understand a little bit about that culture. It was agricultural culture, which is to mean his house, what they would do sometimes is they would bring the animals into the house so they wouldn't freeze in the cold at night. All right, that's the way. And so they lived, they slept on kind of like a loft. And the family was up there in the loft, and the animals were down below. So in the guy, the neighbor's thinking, ain't no way. I don't want to wake up my family. And man, who knows what I'm going to step on if I go down there right now. Basically, that's it. That's the story. But the guy keeps knocking. The guy keeps, come on, man, help a brother out. <laughs> come on, man, help a brother out. You know, they didn't, have, they didn't have an off switch like we can do our phones and we can block it. You know how we do? Block it. No. So help a brother out. He keeps knocking. He keeps knocking. The Bible says, and he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give it to you. Verse 8, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence. Say persistence. persistence. Say it again. One more. No, say it with attitude. Persistence. That means persistent. That means I don't give up. That means I'm going to keep knocking, keep knocking, keep knocking until you get my bread. Actually, it's his bread, but I want it. <laughs> but because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Verse 9. So I say to you, and he's still teaching on prayer, okay? This is a teaching on prayer. I mean, how many, how many I've known people give up? Not nobody in this church, church across the street. They give up, man, after, you know, praying one time, it didn't happen. God don't care. God always answers prayer. He either says yes, no, or wait. Always. He always answers, all right? So watch what Jesus says, or listen, verse 9. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given. That famous verse. Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Now, in the Greek, in this tense, it means it doesn't just say knock one time. It says keep knocking. Say keep knocking. Keep, knocking. keep seeking. Keep knocking, keep seeking, keep asking. How? Persistently. I say, I don't know what part of God uh, uh, is satisfied with our persistence, but he wants us to be persistent. He don't want us to give up. He don't want us to come halfway. He wants us to keep coming back. Come on, let me hear you say keep coming back. Whoa, man, sounds like CR Thursday night. And he goes on. Verse 10. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. Now here comes the heart of Papa Dios. Abba, Father, Papi Dios. <laughs> Verse 11, if a son asks for a bread from any father among you, <laughs> will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Verse 13, some of y'all need to mark this in your Bibles if you have them. If you, then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Like that song we sing, why does it say, he's a good, good father. That's who you are. 
It's who you are. It's who you are. I don't know, know the other part. And I'm loved by it's who you are. There's nobody like our God. I've given you a couple of things. I hope you wrote them down and taken some notes. And I want you to know, you know, you don't have to pray that prayer exactly because Jesus gave the same teaching in Matthew chapter 6. I think it's verse 9 through, I want to say about 16, something like that, the same teaching. And he doesn't, the Lord's prayer is not exactly the same. It's, you know, it has the same model, same print, but it's through different words, all right? And I think Holy Spirit put that in there for us like that. At that time, he was teaching the, right around the Sermon of the Mount. There were a lot more people, all right? And it was at a different time in his ministry. It was earlier in his ministry. But he does the teaching again. Why? Because, man, prayer, he's on his way to the cross. He wants to lead behind a praying people that will shake the world with the power of their prayers to their Father, and so, you know, this is not a condemning message. I hope it hadn't come ac- across like that because, listen, some of us, amen, we need some help with our prayer lives. And those of you that struggle, man, somebody needs to, hey, pray a minute a day is where I start with people. Say, Pastor Henry, a minute a day? Yes, a minute a day. That prayer isn't 30 seconds, the Lord's Prayer. Do you realize New Testament prayers, what they were like in the book of Acts? Stand up and walk. Lazarus, come forth. They were no flowery stuff. Man, it was to the point. It was to the power. Take up your mat. Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give unto you in the name of Christ Jesus. Stand up and walk. What was that, 10 seconds? Come on now. Come on, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. No, man, hey, listen, you don't need to be eloquent, you don't need to be long, but you need to know and trust that when you ask in Jesus' name, God is going to work it out. God is going to work it out. So back to a minute. So, Pastor Henry, how are you going to do that? Say a minute. I'm going to tell you something. For the person that isn't praying at all, a minute could be the difference between life and death. See, because what prayer is, and ladies, y'all can relate to this. Prayer is the umbilical cord that attaches us to God. You know what that umbilical cord, right? That's where the blood, the oxygen, the nutrient, everything comes through the umbilical cord. And man, we need that umbilical cord to be tapped into Jesus Christ, to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We need that. And listen, somebody said, Brother Travis, that, you know, uh, that prayer changes things. Yes, yeah, sometimes, but I'll tell you what it always changes. It always changes me because it gets me in his presence. It gets me in his presence. Man, it gets me and it'll get you in, your pres- in his presence too. So listen, some of y'all have stopped seeking. You've stopped knocking. You've kind of given up on some of those prayers. Well, I got, man, a whole group of people. We're going to pray with you today. And man, we're going to jump start, you know, jump start that dead battery today. For you mechanics that are in here, we got a bunch of those too. We're going we're gonna to give you Holy Ghost jump today. We're going to do a jump today. But before we do that, I want every head bowed. Elijah, why don't you come, man, brother, up here. Every head bow, every eye closed, and we all praying. We winding this thing down right now. I hope you learned a couple of things because that's what God's word does. I told y'all at the beginning, I think, when I first got up here that, of course, my heart, man, is that everybody leaves here with Jesus. That everybody leaves here in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus in you. Say, I'm not ready. I'm not good. I'm not. Yeah, you'll never be ready. You'll never be good enough. You'll never be able to make the adjustments you think you need to make before you could come to God. If you needed that, if you could do that, you would have done it by now. And you wouldn't be in church today. And Jesus wouldn't have had to come if we could just fix ourselves. But he wants to do an inside job. And it as starts with you asking him to come into your heart. It starts, you know, when you say, man, uh, man, change the way you're thinking about God. In other words, stop running away from God. 
and start moving towards him today. Man, friends, it's, it, it, I, I would love to be the one that, that helps you with that. Only Jesus could save you, but I could, I could pray with you. And we all did that at one time. So with the heads are bowed, eyes closed, I had two different calls. And, and hey, uh, the first one is, hey, Pastor Henry, you know, I, I, I did have, was Jesus, but, but man, I've fallen away. I haven't been living for Jesus. I'm glad I came to church today. Thank you for giving me this message. I'm ready to knock. I'm ready to seek. I'm ready to ask Jesus to come into my life and, 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 and I want to come back to Jesus. I, I've fallen away. I'm backslidden, Pastor. That's the truth. But I want to get right with God. If that's you this morning, I just want you to look up, make eye contact with me. I see, yep, see, yeah, a bunch of y'all. Okay, God bless you. You got people waving at me. They're ready for that. Beautiful. I sense God's love in this place. The second group of people are people you've never had a relationship with God. This even seems a little different from you, but you know something's going on inside of you. And you want to give your life to Jesus for the very first time. You want to you want to see, you want to knock in and you want Jesus to come into your heart. If that's you, I want you to look up and make eye contact with me. Oh, that's a couple of y'all right there. Okay. And over there, there's a few. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> We're going to pray with y'all in a minute. I'm so happy. That's how I started 43, 44 years ago. I didn't think I'd still be here today, but God is merciful and God is good. I want you to pray a prayer with me, and I'm going to ask at this time all the staff to come on up. Feel free to come on up here while I'm praying. Staff, leaders, come. All the staff, leaders. Let's get my CR leaders up here. Our intercessors up here. Come on. They're going to be, I think we got more people than this <laughs> that are going to be coming. I want you to stand with me and pray this prayer. Pray, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. thanking you for what's going on inside of me right now. You move me. You stir my soul. Thank you for revealing to me that I need Jesus today. I need him in my heart, in my mind, and in my life I'm changing the way that I think about you right now no longer running away but running to you we're going to pause this prayer right now those of y'all who are getting right with God, I want you to come on, take a move up here. All of y'all, that row back here in the back, come on. All of you said, hey, no, I want to get my life right with God. Come on, come on, don't, don't, this is it. We're running to you, right? We're going to seek. Come on. There was some more. There was some more. Find someone up here. Yeah, find someone. Find someone. There's a bunch over here. Come on, there's some more of you. We just want to pray with you. Come on. Ven con ella. If you got someone, bring, bring, come with them. Yes. If you got with someone there, and they bring them with you. Come on. And I want you all who are up here praying with them, pray the rest of the prayer with them, all right? Pray the rest of the prayer. I gave you a good start. They're asking Jesus in their hearts. We got some more room. Come on. You want to get right with God. You want to come back to Jesus. You want to give him your life for the very first time. Come on, we got some more workers right here. And if you're no spectators, if you need prayer for anything, you want to get behind them, some workers will come. 
Shori alabasanda alabasaya. Jesus, Jesus, come on. Yes, come on up here, man. Come on. Bang. Pray, 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 pray. Come on, there's more room. You know God's tugging at you. Come, 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 come. Is this how we're going to conclude our service? Look how beautiful. Right? Let's give the Lord a hand out there for these salvations, these people getting right. People come. This is what it's about, church. This is why Jesus came. If you need any other prayer for anything, you can come too. We got more workers coming. The rest of you, God bless you. Thank you for coming. Remember, next week is the baby dedication. Next Saturday is the men's meeting, breakfast, and also the woman of promise. God bless you. And thank you for coming.